All right, vlogging. People seem to enjoy that. So, uh, what am I doing right now? It's uh, about 10 to 9. I'm walking to work. I always try to walk to work. It's about 25 minutes walking. It's nice exercise. I mean, I have a very sedentary lifestyle in, in work at the office, sit all day. I mean, of course, I walk around a bit, but it's, it's fairly sedentary. So I like to do this for exercise. Walk there, walk back. It's about 50 minutes, 55 minutes walking in total. Uh, it's nice. Also, you arrive all fresh and, uh, you know, all nice and uh, mind cleared and all that. So I really like that. Now, uh, there are additional benefits to walking. Of course, you can wear fancy sunglasses. But apart from that, you also get to enjoy your city. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of things that you don't really see if you're uh, driving around. I don't drive around because I don't have a car. But if you were to drive around, you might miss things. Um, so uh, let, me, let me show you a couple of things that you could be missing. Well, here you have a really nice canal and you've got some nice old houses. Now, also, you may have heard about the Netherlands and think, oh, windmills, that's all rubbish. But crazy thing is, it's true. The windmills, the tulip fields, it's all true. All of it. Um, so we do actually have windmills right there at the edge of town. That's a giant windmill. Uh, so tulip fields are a bit harder to show you. They are mainly harder to show you because, uh, of course, they're not in the center of town. Uh, anyway. Also, the cares of everyday life. The hairline seems to recede more every day. Soon I may be bald. Does one mind being bald? I don't think I mind. I've never really cared that much about the way I look, as long as I, you know, I look presentable. So, soon I'm going to be follicle deficient. Oh well. Another benefit to walking is that there were two, two tourist ladies right there. Uh, one of them looked at a big sign and said, Oh, that must be the street name, Utgesundert. Uh, actually, what she read was Utgesundert, which means accepting. So it was just a sign that said, one-way street, accepting bicycles and motorcycles. So sometimes you can be confused. So I, you know, thought it would be fair of me to point that out to them. You know. Why is it still on? You can't be tapping the button. Well, I guess then I just talk on. All right. Well, we're, at, we're heading uh, into the station area of Leiden. Station areas, you know, train stations. It's some, for some reason, I never think they're the nicest areas of town. Also, a lot of traffic. Shows road, no cars. Okay, well, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. About you, but I've always found this the set of a haunted house movie. And that's freaky. Completely freaks me out. So I have to love the architecture here. Like it. Alright, that yellow building, that's where I work. I don't know if that's some type of helicopter flying overhead. In any case, I thought I would just film it from here so it doesn't look too creepy when I crawl up to it and then start filming. But just so you know, Faculty of Social Science, Leiden University. What the hell is that noise? It should be a peaceful walk, people. Yeah, that's it then. Great. It was actually the trauma helicopter, yeah. an academic hospital, five minutes that way. You can, you can kind of see it. Let me see. You see it? Right, it's about that building between the trees. So sometimes, of course, the trauma helicopter lifts off. I mean, clearly if there's something terrible going on, I'm not trying to joke about that. But it's so loud. To quote Monty Python, Identifying trees from quite a long way away. Number five, the willow. The willow. Am I the only one who, in my beautiful building, finds these suicide nets slightly alarming? Of exercise, I always try to take the stairs too. I work on the fifth floor. So, uh, get the idea? Of course, there are bathrooms in the four corners of the building. It's quite deep. Good thing is, this has a kind of a nice acoustics. In paradisum, le tu cahante hangeli. 
out again because we have to get some lunch. We need to eat. It happens. I'm gonna get some fish. In this country we're always close to water so there's usually quite a lot of fish like that. Remember when there was bright sunlight when I walked out? Well now it's raining. That's one of the fun bits of the Netherlands. Weather changes really quickly. But you know, as my granddad used to say, whatever you get for free, you don't have to buy, and the weather is one of those things. And that's lunch then. I thought I would share this because as far as I know, this is a very Dutch traditional way to prepare fish. It's called kibbeling, and kibbeling is, uh, I think it's cod, which they batter in something and then deep fry, and then you get some weird sauce mayonnaise based uh, maybe a remoulade type type sauce I, I i don't care for it that much but it's nice it's it's battered with a bit of salt of course and then a sort of a, a herbal mixture making for a very nice flavor so of course you don't eat it with a little plastic fork because you never never trust a strange fork you don't know where it's been so i eat it with my trusty spore knife um, but uh, let's let's see what it tastes like It's a good one, it's crunchy. I like the flavor. Sorry. It's um, uh, it's a bit salty, but not too salty. It has a nice, there's a bit of paprika in it, I think, and probably some other stuff, because maybe a bit of garlic. But it's nice. It, it has a nice flavor, a nice texture, and the soft fish with the crunchy, um, batter that, that that works really well so having lunch and of course another way to eat it is to wrap it in a little uh, a napkin but then it's cape cod i like our uh, fancy glass elevator sometimes it's fun just to write that to the top i mean i am at the top anyway but i mean fifth floor that's actually some uh, well, pretty decent view, I would say. Those noises are upsetting, though. Okay, well, then this is the view from my office, so let me let me zoom in a bit there. I hope this is slightly acceptable. Okay, so what we see there is that mill that I've already shown you in the morning, and then to the left of that is the Mare Kerk. Mare is one of the uh, uh, rivers uh, that, that sort of... Uh, confluence, what do you call that, it comes together in Leiden with uh, the Rhine River. That's actually the oldest Protestant church in the Netherlands. If you move a little bit to the right, so that weird white thing, that's the central station of Leiden, but then you see two churches behind that. Um, and I think that um, uh, one is the uh, Hochlandse Kerk, that's the, the farther one, a nice old Gothic church. Before that is a little little tower, uh, that is the uh, Hartebrug Kerk. An uh, interesting thing is that the uh, locals call that the Coolie Kerk. Uh, and uh, the, th the reason for that is that on the uh, tympanon it has a, uh, an inscription that says Hic Domus Dei et Porta Celi. This is the house of God and the gate to heaven in Latin. Uh, but Celi is spelled C-O-E-L-I. So Celi, but in Dutch you would pronounce that Coolie. So people just say the Coolie Kerk. Coolie Kerk. Um, but, you know. So, Dutch landscape. Okay, walking home now. So, on the left there you have the uh, Maarkerk, that the Protestant church, and then the other one is the uh, Koolikerk, Hartebrugkerk. I like this scenery. It's just neat. Uh, in, uh, Leiden is actually the city after Amsterdam that has the uh, largest amount of canals in the Netherlands, which uh, at least I read. So I find that fascinating. I realized I actually didn't really record myself doing work. Uh, the reason for that was quite simply that I'm writing a paper. So I mean if you just, you know, if I record myself typing all day, it doesn't sound very interesting to me. You know, but anyway, we're walking home. We're almost there. Alright. Well, let's adjust that a bit. So we're walking. I'm almost home now. This is, uh, well, I don't know, 15, 17 minutes in or something. Outside of the uh, direct city centre, it's still officially a city centre of Leiden, but it's much quieter here, as you, as you can probably hear, a lot less traffic. Over to my right, 
up is the uh, harbour of Leiden. But like pleasure yachts, that kind of stuff. That's why I have the Esbjerg Brown Yacht Store. If I had one. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's... Uh, I like this. These are old Dutch houses. It's very small. Uh, this was built for people who work in factories and such so that they could have affordable housing a bit smaller but affordable and I think it's nice I like the roofs very characteristic Dutch uh, stuff I'll show you the harbour in one second harbour you can see some of the masts it's uh, interesting now if you turn around that's the old uh, city gate of Leiden so officially I live right outside the city gate the old gates, I'll show, I'll show it to you from the other side. Uh, it's pretty neat. It'll be the old city wall. And you got the gate there. And then on this side, have to be careful for cyclists. That's all defensive stuff. You probably saw some of those cannon, like that one over there. Uh, that was used to defend the city a long time ago. Alright, then after coming home you need a snack, so here is some uh, smoked salmon with dill and honey mustard sauce, which I made, and an expensive pen. You know, just for fun. Alright. Time to, uh, work on dinner. Tonight's going to be a stir-fry. So we have to do the beef. This weird pounding is just to tenderize the meat a bit. There we go.